everybody. Welcome to another episode of Raised on the Radio. I am one half of this show. I am Colt Brocato, my good friend Patrick Blair in Zoom land as usual. And friends, it has been a hectic week. So hectic that I get messages every day from Patrick saying, we need to record every day because you have rants about different things every day. So let's start with anything, anything you got, let's go. No, just because I say that doesn't mean I'm ranting. It just means it's a good conversation to be having for the podcast. Not Most of the time it's ranting though. Come on. That's fine. So let me ask you this. How did you, <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, what do you think of the new Eminem song that I sang? It's, it's Eminem's new, newest style. I would say Meaning like, you, you know, you know, you know what album it's off of, right? It's like the, is it songs to be murdered by? Is that what the album's called? I think. And this is considered side B for it. Oh, great. Yeah. And maybe it's just, I'm out of the loop, but even like social media wise and stuff, I'm not seeing the promotion for any of this. I think he's just dropping stuff randomly. Yeah. I think he's, which I like, I think that's cool. And then in the, in the, in the Twitter sphere and the YouTube communities that are stands of M&Ms, uh, that's kind of the way he's doing it from what I've gathered, right. which I think is cool. I, I, I'm down with that. I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I don't, so that song, like, I don't like, I still just as, as, a, as an MC, I just can't get on board. It's just too goofy to me. It's just, it's, but anyway, that beat, however, is fucking that. I love that beat. So whoever made that beat, my hat's off to you. That beat is fucking hard um, and Eminem typically is a guy who's a bad beat picker so I was surprised when I heard that beat it does not to me and then I, I don't know a lot about Eminem because I'm not a fan but to me and maybe that's why I don't like Eminem because every I was song- gonna say so so are you saying that if he was a better beat picker you would you might be more of an Eminem fan no oh not not even close I just would hate on him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, it was cool. Uh, it was kind of a. It, I like the hook, and I like the, the beat. The hook was, you know, uh, what did he say? It says, oh, "God dang it, I had it right before we started, and now I forgot what it was." And the song's called Nat. It's the like- song's called Nat. He said, "Damn it, these bars are like COVID. They come right off the bat. That's how he starts it. Yeah, these bars yeah. are like COVID. They come right off the bat. Now look." That's a typical Eminem <laughs> line, um, but I liked it. It was cool. But the rest, I mean, so so a lot of I know if you don't, if you're not a big Eminem fan, you probably haven't listened to like you know through the albums like his last few. No, and I'm not saying they're hacky, but they are definitely like hit you with everything over and over and over again. It's like here's a. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's like, here's one thing, here's one thing, here's one thing, but it's like kind of jokey in all of his, in all of his lines. Like there's a, um, I don't remember what song it was, but I was listening to it on the newest album. And he said, uh, I won't stand for that shit. Just like, Ka- just like Kaepernick with the national anthem or something along those lines. Like it's, 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 it's pop culture esque in a lot of the things that he talks about, but it's Always also, yeah. yeah, I know, but it's it's also like now one after the other, after the other, after the other, which I kind of like because I like thinking about that kind of stuff and I like listening for that stuff. Like if when he put out uh, the, I think it's called Kamikaze, when he put out that album, I can probably still listen to songs and catch things that I haven't caught in the past. So Kamikaze, that's the one that he had the MGK diss and the, <clears throat> excuse me, Lil, Lil Uzi Vert diss and all that shit, right? Is that I Kamikaze? So. I believe so. It is. No, because I remember it from MGK's diss track that he mentioned Kamikaze. Um, what did you say the line was? I don't stand for that like Colin Kaepernick in the National Anthem. It, I mean, it was, of course, it's not exactly like that, but that's, that was the, the term. He, he, he brought something else into it because he was like, he was describing something and then he was like, I, don't, I won't stand for that shit. And then it's just like Kaepernick with the National, or the National Anthem or something along those lines. If it's any, if it's anywhere close to that, how about on the news? Predictable. <laughs> Move on. 
That's why I don't like them. I, that that line is corny to me. But some for some reason people think that's genius. But it's also well, I'm not saying it's genius, but that's also a three You're second not, line in a five people. minute song. You know, so yeah, that's not that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like and we probably get, we'll get into this too. But we uh, you turned me on to Andrew Schultz and his his TV show. And when I started listening to this album and I started realizing like it's you know thing after thing after thing. It's kind of like the same thing as like what Andrew Schultz is doing with his show. It's like constant hitting you, hitting you, hitting you yeah. over and over and over again with content really fast that you need to try to catch. And it's a lot of it's hacky, but it's like so fast that you don't understand that it's hacky. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, I think hacky is a harsh word to use on some of it. I would say more on the nose, you know, okay. like, uh, like one of the lines was like, uh, Something went so fast, it's like Gushers on Epstein's Island. Like, huh, huh, right. kids, Gushers and kids were on the island, so I get it. Like, maybe it's hacky, but just to me, it's just on the note. It's just, it's too easy. That's that. Right. Anyway, but also we got to move on from the Epstein's Island jokes. Anyway, everyone, but what do I know? Um, I think he's like that. Though. Well, okay, I'll tell you, I, I don't know why he's like that. Because I'm not going to pretend I know how to do stand-up comedy. But what I enjoy about it is that the punchline after punchline after punchline after punchline beautifully disguises his racist, sexist, homophobic, yeah, homophobic, I know. transphobic, excuse me, point of views. But he's not doing those things in a nasty way. He's just making points that are or should be obvious to everyone. He's not being racist. He's saying racial things. He's not being sexist. You know, um, he's not being homophobic or transphobic. He's saying what everyone is afraid to talk about, essentially. I don't think that makes you racist. I don't think, you know, that if you're, just because you're saying it, just because you're saying what everyone else is thinking doesn't make you the bad guy. Right. So those, those pun that punchline, you know, that punchline after punchline is really sort of putting those in a pocket where if you're not paying attention, you're going to miss it. And that's what makes it, to me, unique and also readily available on Netflix for the whole world to hear. Um, right. And, well, and that's why when you told me about the, this show, told me I needed to watch it immediately. So I got on, I watched like three episodes of it. And just, I, I immediately texted you back and said, I feel like Netflix is going to get a lot of blowback for putting this out. Yeah. And it's just because of what you said. It's not it's not because it's racist. It's not because it's sexist. It's not because it's, you know, all these things. It's because it's just pushing the boundaries way too far. I think that people who aren't really paying attention to what he's saying, they're going to look at it from their point of view and get pissed off about it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, Maybe, maybe, maybe Netflix won't. Maybe it's just another show that'll be in their thousands and thousands of shows that, I don't know. We'll see. But now you said Andrew Schultz does a, a podcast or something, or you said, or is he a stand up comedian too? I don't know anything about him. Okay. So that's good. So that was going to be the next thing that I said, because the way that you just described all of that, if you didn't follow him before, this is all going to seem like, Whoa, can't believe he's saying that. And this is the way he's been. So those videos that you, so it's called Andrew Schultz saves America. It's on Netflix. It's like a four part, four episode. They're quick, 15 minutes long four episode breakdown of what's going on in society today, essentially. Um, but he did those videos on YouTube on his own. Um, but yeah, he's been, he's a stand-up comedian. And so I, my, the, th the thing I was going to say to what your points were, this isn't anything new for him. You know, he's, uh, I, I don't, I push the boundaries maybe, but I think he's just a guy who's not afraid to, I mean, if you go out and, and you just YouTube clips of his stand-up, a lot of his crowd work, it's all racial, racially based humor and racially, you know, calling people, you know, not afraid to call you out on your race or uh, there's a clip of him in St. Louis at Helium where, and it's, I'm pretty sure it's gone viral. You can definitely find it easily, but he's talking to these two lesbian girls and the whole, the whole thing that sort of happened was, is he's talking to them, he's talking about He's talking about them having sex with each other and who's the, who's the power person in the relationship. I don't know what that's called in the lesbian world, excuse me. Um, but 
So like, <laughs> he's, he's talking about this and then he asks them their names. And I don't remember I, their, their name. Well, they look, they didn't have names. Their names weren't, you know, Molly and Susie. Like they had like, not white girl names. So he kind of was like, God, white girls, white bitches in St. Louis got the blackest names ever. He's like, black people. You. So then he starts this whole racial conversation about their names being not white. Now, some people might be offended by this. I'm not personally, so I watched it with ease. But also, if you followed anything that he's done, this is not a new conversation for him to be having with the crowd on stage. He put out an entire special, maybe 2019, maybe it was 2018. I'm pretty sure it was in between there. But so he put out an entire special. It was just crowd work. Just crowd work. He walked out, started riffing with the crowd. That's it. Wow. Um, And it was good. But believe me, all of the stuff that he's talking about, I mean, I, I think the first thing he does is he goes after a guy in the front row who's like half Asian, half white. And he said he looked like Brandon, uh, Brendan Dassey from Making a Murderer, right? Uh huh. So it, it started with race, turned into retard jokes, turned into all this stuff. Yeah, I know I can't use that word, but I did. I can't take it back now. Um, so that's not anything new for him. So I was listening. He does do a podcast. To answer your question on that, it's called Flagrant Two. And I'm started. I'm kind of. I might be tapping out on the podcast. Um, some like, I, I think it's like for me with Rogan, if there's a clip up and it's a person or a topic that I find interesting or I follow, then I'll listen. But it, it just, it turned into something that it wasn't when I started listening to it. So I'm kind of like, eh, whatever. But, um, he had an episode of his podcast where he talked about, yeah, Netflix picked up my TV show that I did on YouTube essentially and was explaining how they got it done. He got COVID when they started recording those. <laughs> so that made the whole experience more interesting for him. So I think a lot of the stuff you hear in that first episode about COVID is coming from the unique place of him having had COVID. Whereas I'm curious as to what that would have been had he not had COVID. Right. Maybe it's all the same, you know. Uh, but, you know, knowing that before watching the special on Netflix, I was like, oh, this is, I, I wonder how this is going to go because he's, his whole staff got COVID. Everyone was sick. So wow. they, like they were stressed that they weren't even going to get it done and Netflix was going to drop it. So it, it, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I like him as a standup. I think he's funny, but I, I especially like the, the, the crowd work, you know, he's a good joke teller, I guess, but like his crowd work, you know. Well, I think one of the things I asked you was because the only experience I had with him was just watching him on the, this Netflix show. Yeah, and I think the question I asked you was: Is he really a good, like, good with comedy, or is he just um, like a does he read a teleprompter kind of guy? Because you can tell that's what he's doing in the show because he's got he has to like to go through that much information in in a fifteen minute period. You know, he's got to just be kind of reading off reading off a teleprompter and then just kind of doing the actions, the body work to uh, to go along with it. But yeah, I was I I didn't know if 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 you're saying that he can do a whole special just off a of crowd work, then apparently yeah, he's he's an on the spot kind of guy, and he can you know make arguments and things like that on the on the fly too. Yeah, um, I didn't really get I didn't get the vibe that he was reading a ton during those. Really? I mean, he might have been, but I wouldn't be surprised if he memorized a lot of that shit. If so, that's impressive. Yeah. I, I, well, dude, I mean, he has to memorize his act. So does every other comedian, you know? Yeah, true. If it, look, if he, if he treats it like it's his act, then a lot of those punchlines, like we were talking about, like the Epstein's Island punchlines and the, you know, those for a stand-up comedian who's been doing it for a long time, that's routine. That's, that's autopilot shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's good. It's interesting. So I recommend people go check it out. I, at the very least, listen to someone talk about Corona and Black Lives Matter and Trump and Biden and politics and all this shit. Listen to someone who's not censoring themselves before they speak, I guess. 
and it's not like like we said this doesn't this had to be written so it's not like it's on the fly shit so he had time to think about should i say this or not but look i mean he's saying things that no one else is is saying and he started doing I, videos when the pandemic started and i said there are two people right now who are killing the pandemic and killing quarantine musically machine gun kelly and from the in the stand-up comedian world andrew schultz just content 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 all good all watchable um so <laughs> go check it out the reason i asked about eminem is boy did that video take me down a weird rabbit hole like an eminem rabbit hole nope nope so it got me thinking about, so like when I was listening to that song, and I listened to the song two times in a row because I, I really did just love that beat that much. And uh, I was trying to listen for other stuff that he said that would piss me off. He didn't really piss me <laughs> off. At this point, I just got to chalk it up to he's Eminem and I'm, I'm not gonna, we're not going to be pals. But um, it got me thinking about early in his career when he would attack boy bands and pop stars. And it sent me down a pop star and boy band rabbit hole on YouTube. It like nostalgia. Well, no. Well, I mean, <laughs> kinda I it's there. Yeah. But Here's where I started. It made me think about that. And then it made me think of go, Oh, I remember once upon a time, Eminem and Nelly were beefing. And I remember Nelly being on like TRL or one of these shows where he just was like, yeah, they asked him about it. And Nelly was like, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't, I don't battle M&Ms. I eat them or something like that. He said something like that, but then that's kind of where it ended. They never really, nothing really ever happened between the two. And I was like, Oh, this is, was this was Eminem's comfortable place where he was, you know, talking about boy bands and pop stars and Limp Bizkit, like, Ooh, scary. Like, um, ICP was in there somewhere. ICP was in there, but I think that actually got, I think he pulled a gun on them and had to go. Yeah, to well, that's, yeah, that's part of one of the songs is, uh, talks about, talks about them ducking out the back of a, a building that Holy he shit. came in with a gun in. Yeah. Are you the biggest Eminem stan in the world? <laughs> I grew up listening to a lot. Of, I grew up listening to a lot of Eminem. Whoa. That's yeah. dude. That's why he has sold millions and millions of records. They even got out to the woods. It's good to know. <laughs> um, well, anyway. do you remember? So you remember? Uh, well, you talk about boy bands, and it's like one of the, probably the bo one boy band that only had like one song was that LFO. You remember LFO? No, remind me who they are. Uh, how does that song go? The um... no, I do know who. God, I'm embarrassed. I do know who you're talking <laughs> about. I like girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch. And yeah, stuff. right. Yeah, and then Eminem's got that line in his song that. Oh, come on. I didn't know that either. Why do you know all this? Give me some time. I'll think about it. Okay. Think about it while I'm... I'm so, anyway, it sent me down this boy band rabbit hole on YouTube. I was okay. like, I've never done in all these years of getting on YouTube and spending way too much time in there looking up old live performances. I've never looked up a live performance of a boy band. And so I don't my, think I have either, honestly. My mind was transitioning from Nelly and Eminem to didn't Nelly do the Super Bowl halftime show one time with NSYNC? Type it right in. There it is. Super Bowl 2001. NSYNC and Aerosmith <laughs> with Britney Spears, Mary J. Blige, and Nelly. And I thought, why didn't anyone think the world was ending when this happened? <laughs> <laughs> and so... I started and Instinct goes first, and they do with the um, "Bye Bye Bye" that song. Okay. Which, oddly enough, I think we've talked about on this podcast before. Maybe it was like during a music lyrics conversation. Anyway, Maybe. so, dude, they they run up these steps. Before I say this, so let me just say this: I have mad respect for those dudes when they tried to sing live and do all the dancing they did. Because let me tell you, one of the hardest things to do when it comes to singing is singing when you're out of breath. So mm -hmm. you have to be in incredible shape to do all that dancing they do and all that choreography and then still sing. And, and not only sing, but sing inky and then sing like 
and sound like you're not out of breath, which is that it's hard. It's right. not easy to do, but these fuckers, you know, they're in sync. So they got to ham up everything. So they're like in a, in a tunnel with Aerosmith and like Ben Stiller's there and they run out of this room. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. really random. So bizarre. <laughs> so they run out of this, like biz- this locker room through this tunnel, through the fans, up these steps and these poor fucking guys, by the time they get up on stage, they're all exhausted. They're all out of breath. So the first, the first note you hear is out of Justin Timberlake and it's bad, dude. It's bad. And I was like, Oh guys, you should have just lips like just lip sync. Like it was so bad, but they kind of recovered well. But then the one dude who's the other front man, that's not Justin Timberlake. He gets up there and homeboy is so out of breath, but he's like a lead guy. So he's got important parts that everyone knows, you know, Mm -hmm. and he's so out of breath. And I'm like, dude, why, why dance? Just, you guys just sing, just be, I don't know. It was so, so I was like, I was just like, Oh my God, these poor fucking guys. So I'm watching it, like feeling bad for NSYNC. And then in the back of my mind, I'm like, why do I feel bad for these fucking guys? Who, who feels bad for these rich boy banders? Like they all still are like, so Aerosmith gets out there and they play that song from Armageddon. Uh, and then they play that other song that was popular during that time, which is hands down, I, I forgot about it, but hands down, one of my least favorite songs. Was, oh, it, jade, was it Jaded? Yes. Holy crap. That song gives me goosebumps in a bad way. They're not good goosebumps. <laughs> They're like, oh, this song could be playing at my funeral kind of goosebumps. Like, it's bad. Wow. Um, but then, you know, they play Walk This Way. That's when Mary J. Blige comes out and Brittany and Nelly come, comes out. And Nelly did his thing. And it was actually, I remember in the moment watching that being like, oh, Nelly kind of killed that. And then like rewatching it 19 years later, I'm like, oh yeah, Nelly kind of killed that. That was cool. Good for him. But you watch, I'm watching and I'm going, all right, of all the people on the stage with Mary J. Blige and Aerosmith excluded. So all the boy banders and Britney, it is 100% clear that Justin Timberlake was going to be a star and the rest of them were not. It was really. It, Oh, he just outshined all the rest oh, of them. Yeah. Like just the, everything about it, personality, the dancing, the singing, like he was still good at the, even though he struggled in the beginning, like he, when he sang, you just knew like, Oh, this dude's going to be, that was before his solo career. So like you knew like this dude's going to eventually walk away from this nonsense and he's going to be, you could just tell. Right. Now I say that now, but back then I'm like, oh, fucking boy bander, fuck him. You know? So like, <laughs> um, so yeah, it just sent me down a rabbit hole watching like live performance. I, Cause I was always curious too. Like I remember vividly when the, the first time I saw a boy band sort of come back, it was the Backstreet Boys. And it was, I was empty, had empty, like this is how long, God, I'm so old, but I, this was when I was still living with my parents, I think, or maybe in between moving, coming back from somewhere, but any, either way. So like, I remember being in my parents' living room had MTV on it was like a spring break or summer thing or something. No, maybe it was the summer. And one of the, whoever the, one of the VJs, whoever it was back then, like, ladies and gentlemen, you know, give it up for the Backstreet Boys. It's like the back. Like, I remember hearing the name, like, Oh God, what is it? And then I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, Whoa, is this a joke? I, I didn't, I thought it, I thought it was like a parody thing. Like why I like and I remember in my mind being like well, why are they doing this to new kids on the block why are they hate like what are they doing so like <laughs> and then like as I'm watching I'm like no this is real and I was like, so wait so so you you thought or you said they were coming back or this was your original the first time you seen Backstreet Boys first time I think it was their first appearance on MTV so you thought that it was that they were parodying like new kids on the block or something. So you just couldn't believe that there was a new boy band out there or you just thought it was that terrible. No, I thought it was a, I thought it was like a, a sketch comedy group doing a parody. <laughs> I swear to God, man, I'm not making this up. <laughs> what was going through my head at the time. And then once I That's realized, hilarious. once I realized it was real mind blown, I was just like, I can't believe this. And then, you know, a year later, they've, they're mega stars and sync has come out. They're mega stars. And I was like, well, it was definitely real, um, but where do we go from here? This is crazy. Um, well, so so back to the Eminem thing real quick. So, like, as far as the beefs and stuff go that you were talking about, do you think 
most of those were just made up just for any kind of benefit of his own, like his, his career, like, so like the MGK thing, you know, that he, he did the, he started this beef with Eminem for his own career. I mean, in general. So like, I mean, the same thing, like there was a lot of beefs that Eminem hold had on, back hold in on, the back day. Up, back up, back up real quick. Who started the beef? What do you mean who started the beef? You said he started it to benefit his own career. Are you talking about Eminem or MGK? MGK. Well, MGK responded to benefit his own career. That's yeah. what I mean. Yes. Oh, yes. Fuck yeah. So that's, that's what I'm saying. So, Smartest movies ever made. Right. And I'm not saying it's, it's dumb. I'm just, I'm just saying that he, he did that to benefit his own career. So what I'm, what I'm asking is a lot of those beefs that Eminem had back in the day, do you think those were the same kind of concept? Like he mentioned somebody else's name in his song, dissing them to benefit his own career because it brings that other artist's crowd to listen to him possibly something along those lines or do you think that that stuff was all real i mean of course apparently the icp thing was all real if he actually tried to you know pull a gun out on him and stuff i don't know right um yeah i think most of it was opportunistic especially with like what 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 problem could he really have with christina aguilera and britney spears and right i think that stuff was just to make fun of that that period of music that really poppy period of music. Yeah. And it got people, like I said, it was opportunistic and it got people's attention. You know, did you hear what Eminem yeah. said about whatever? I mean, that that's look, I mean, it was all very strategic, but again, I, I viewed it simply as that at the time and still do. Cause I've never been, I've never been an Eminem fan. So I just, for right. me, it's different, but I'm sure yeah, you most people would listen to those records and go, but also he's a really great MC. Okay. Fair enough. Not to me, but that's, that's where I stand on it. You know, right. He's had, he's had one song where I was like, and it was off of the album that he debuted with. And I, for the life of me, can't remember what it's called now. That um, he debuted with the one that had the pill on the front of it. Is that this, which one was first, the slim shady LP or the Marshall Mathers LP? Or am I talking about oh. the same thing? I don't know. Role model? Okay, yeah. That how does that go? Man, he's talking about it's, like it's some bars. tying a tying a rope around his dick and swinging from a tree and all this other stuff. It's that's like definitely um, not it. If that's the subject matter of that song, I did not like it. So let's move on. I don't know. Maybe I don't. No, like do, you you have to you have to listen to the song again. No, I sure don't. Uh, nope. Because he's talking. He's basically talking about being a terrible role model. I I get it. I, I, again on the news and, and, it, and then he talked yeah and then and he talks about like different things that he does to be a terrible role model yeah anyways so wait did the beginning of this whole thing start because you thought you liked that song and now you're saying you hate it the new one no you looking up that song why were you looking up that song i like it i can't i don't know what the fuck it is <laughs> I can't find it. I think it's called. I think it's called role model. No, it's not. Let me. Let me. I'll. I'll know when I hear the beat because I rem like like most songs. If the beat is. If the beat is nice, then I'll listen to it for a minute. Hold on. This one. Yes. I like that. That, so that you beat. Like it because of the beat. That beat. Yeah. Is yeah. Yeah. I love that beat. Um, yeah. Now what he's saying, eh, whatever. Like I, I ripped Hillary Clinton's tonsils out and fed her Sherbert. Okay, cool. <laughs> Dude, I might make that a thing I do before I watch the Browns game today is just go back and find all of the Eminem lyrics that really bother me. No, I'm not going to do that. That's a waste of my time. But, um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I went down a boy band rabbit hole and – Again, I have mad respect for those dudes when they tried to actually sing because they had to so, do oh, I, I had something before I forget it. So you, um, you were talking about limp syncing earlier, and I'm – Limp syncing? No, lip. I, I might have said limp. I meant lip. I, lip syncing earlier. And you know, you know how that, ha, that is when, when artists get caught doing that, it's like, it's like a huge deal in the media. Do you respect – or not respect 
any boy band member or, you know, artists, anybody who lip syncs? Does it matter to you or do you, or you coming from a musician, musician standpoint and know how difficult it is to dance and sing and all that together, you respect it more? Um, well, first of all, when is the last time that that mattered? I don't know. I just know that in the past it has been big deal when you win. Like, wasn't it a big deal for Britney? Like, wasn't, didn't she get caught lip syncing one time, like, really bad? Like, all maybe it was Chris- Well. When did she ever sing live? <laughs> you complained about this. I'm telling you, it has been in the media in the past. Like, it, it was a big deal. I'll tell you the, the, the last time that I remember it even being, even being talked about was when, what is her name? Ashley Simpson was on Saturday Night Live and she was okay. singing the wrong song because the tracks were screwed up or something. It was a big deal then. Only because she got, it was just such a monumental fail. That's How is that possible? I don't, you can, again, YouTube it. Um, it hmm. happened. Uh, but what I found gross about that situation is she had a band behind her. So that means the band was playing the tracks as well. So everything about it was just fake. Um, gotcha. Does anyone care about that? Like I, any, any name, name a pop star. You can find videos of them not singing their, their music. Billie Eilish, right. Halsey. Uh, I haven't, I don't know if I've necessarily seen Katy Perry not singing, but she doesn't do, I don't know. In, 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 either way. Uh, Billie Eilish lip syncs? Fuck yeah, dude. She doesn't sing in the first place. So, um, don't that's, get- that's my, po- that's my point. She don't loud sing. whispers. How is, why do you need to lip sync to that? Don't send me on a rant. Um, <laughs> I can't go on a Billy Eilish rant today. We don't have enough time. Um, <laughs> does it bother me? No. I mean, that's just pop music, I guess. You know, I, No, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't okay. bother. Me. <laughs> that was a simple I've, answer. <laughs> but I've also never. I've never like. I've never spent money to go to a, like a, a. A. Pop artist concert. So I don't know what my expectations would be as far as them singing and not singing live. You know. So does so does that hang on. Does that mean that you've been to? a pop concert you just didn't pay for it i mean how did you, how is that is that where, is that where, is that where you were skate were you skating around the fact that you've been to you've been to them but you just haven't paid for them i mean i don't have to skate around that i'll admit that i've been to some um okay name get name me some i want to know who you've been to see justin timberlake on his own yeah and he sang when and was when was great. that jesus 2000 Whenever the the second record he did came out, nice. I, don't know, I don't know when that was. Um, I, w- I would for sure go see Justin Timberlake. Yeah, it was bad. It was it was great. Yeah, but that's also a production. Like, you gotta understand. Yeah. Like, we're not talking about in sync where they're just tracks playing and you got five goofy dudes dancing, doing choreography, and like this was a production. It was good. He had real musicians behind him. Um. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm trying to think of who else. There was someone else. I don't know. Does one Republic count? Eh, I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know. They're... I, I guess pop would kind of have to be their genre, right? Not hip hop or maybe R&B kind of. I don't know. Oh, no, they're pop for sure. Of the two things you just said, they're pop. Okay. Of the two, they're other than the two things you just said. They're pop. <laughs> um, I saw them when that song "Apologize" came out at Pops, actually, um, which is interesting. Oh, they did Pops! Wow. Yeah, yeah they play Pops. Uh, Maroon Five. I've on seen. their own or? Yeah, it was their show. It was oh, I don't. I go see Maroon Five for sure. Don't ask me who opened. I okay. Was under the influence of a lot of things that night. Um, <sighs> Maroon Five. I've seen which I guess that's pop now. I, I think back when I saw them, they're a little more of a, I think I guess, a 
rock band, pop rock band. I don't know. <laughs> um, and what's the other one I've seen? Train. I guess they kind of, again, fall sort of in that weird sort of contemporary rock yeah. thing. Which, by the way, that guy's an unbelievable singer. Um, I can name you one song. That's okay. That's it. That I, that I, from them. Probably their their biggest hit or the first hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that guy's. You know, I, I'm not like I don't know. I don't have. I don't own any of their stuff. I've just you know heard a lot of it in passing. But no, that guy's his name's Pat something. He's a great singer. I'm trying to think. There's someone else that I'm missing that's glaringly obvious that they're pop. Um, who the fuck am I missing? I can't remember. There's one, there's one more and it was a solo artist. I can't remember, man. So yeah, I've been, so again, I don't have, I didn't have expectations. Like I was, but also I wasn't like, I got to get tickets to go see these people. I just went. Right. If it was, if they sang, they sang, if they didn't sing, well, Another beer over here, please. Like I, I it didn't really, <laughs> it was like, whatever. Um, so no, I, I don't care necessarily. I will say you win my respect 100% if you do sing, especially yeah, for in sure. those larger settings. Like, um, I don't like, like shows like American Idol and the voice and all that shit. Like, I don't like what those stand for. Like, I don't think we should be giving people's music careers, giving people a music career from a game show. I just think that's not the way you get your career, but that's hard to do. Like what the people in the voice do, like go on that stage and have all that live music behind them and perform. Like, that's not, that's not easy to like sing and sing well like that. That's not, it's not easy. So I have respect for them in that sense, but like go fucking earn, go, go play some shows. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like a lot of those people that won just went straight from their basement, straight from mom and dad's basement to the show and like did well and then got a music career, which again, it's, that's not easy to do. You had to prove that you could sing and prove that you were talented, but yeah, but even winners fell off. I mean, most of them probably right. Had felt fallen off. Yeah. Go grind it out on the road for a little bit. You anyway, (laughs) Mm-hmm. whatever um how did we get there boy band so yeah I, I don't know i don't care i'm still it's driving me nuts that i cannot remember the other pop pop artists that i've seen i'll think of it eventually but i can't right now um what i do want to know is i sent you that eminem video but after that how many jake paul related videos have i sent you since our last show several several you really hate this guy don't you i i don't like him i don't like what he is i don't like who he is i don't like what he stands for no no i don't like him there's no but maybe he's a completely nice guy at home but okay okay but is the reason why you don't like him just because he's boxing because you because you have such a profound respect for boxing that you think that he is basically i guess tarnishing boxing by I, what he's do by what he's doing and that's why you hate him yeah that's one reason sure i didn't like him before that i mean i don't like he's a youtube personality he's a poser it's like i said to you he's he's posing to be a fighter now just like a couple of years ago he was posing to be a rapper he's not a fucking rapper he didn't. right He's working on becoming a good rapper. Fuck no. Just like he's not working on becoming a good fighter. He's not. Right. If he were working on becoming a good fighter, then he wouldn't do a drive-by water ballooning on Dylan Dennis, which was probably all staged anyway. I'm assuming that it was staged because it looked legit in the first video when it's from Paul's perspective. But then, of course, was the next day or two days later, Brennan Schaub posts from their perspective. And it's like, well, for, first off, why was somebody videotaping, already videotaping as he's driving down the road from their angle? You know what I mean? Like there was somebody right behind Dylan Dennis with a phone videotaping this. 
Yeah, but that's not the footage that he posted, though, right? That's what I seen. I think it was a multiple camera shoot, so they had all angles covered. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. Uh, I think so, but... But I've been thinking about your your thought process on this a little bit because you kind of mentioned that you think that Brendan Schaub might have staged this whole thing. Yeah. And if you watch it several times, I, I kind of I kind of get grasped the same thing. And because if you look at Brendan Schaub's reaction to it, he didn't like act like it was anything. He acted like he it wasn't a surprise that this happened. And he didn't really move throughout the whole thing. He just kind of stood there. Yeah, well, look, he, so, mm, the reason that I think it was staged is because, A, he already has a friendly relationship with the Pauls. Okay. B, he's a clout chaser. That's for sure. If Jake Paul disrupts one of his shows, it only helps Brendan. Okay. Okay. So those two things considered, why does he owe anything to Dylan Dennis to not set him up like that? You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. Now, if he does set him up and Dylan Dennis doesn't know anything about it and the whole thing goes sideways, meaning the truck doesn't drive off, Jake Paul gets out of that truck, and Dylan Dennis gets arrested for assault because he ripped Jake Paul's <laughs> knee off, who benefits? Who benefits the most? Brennan Schaub. Absolutely. For Absolutely. Sure. So yeah. like, and it was funny. He said like, oh man, I didn't want to have to dust off the old skill set or whatever. So I was like, dude, <laughs> you weren't going to do shit. Even if it wasn't staged, he, he wouldn't, he wasn't going to go over there and fuck with those guys. Not a chance. Not a chance. Not because he's a, not because he couldn't or wouldn't. I'm not saying that. I'm saying he's a fan. He has two kids. He's got a career. Like he wouldn't go get mixed up in some bullshit like that and risk the chance of he being arrested all for some nonsense. Like, do you, do you, my, my first reaction when I seen it was I thought possibly this was a way to get through Dana to Connor somehow to get Connor wound up because of the whole call out thing. And then, you know what I mean? Like him calling out Connor. And then, of course, Dana White coming out and saying there's absolutely zero chance that that would ever happen and all that. But it, the reason why it clicked like that for me was because of the old um, – who was – was it – who was Connor's uh, teammate that Connor flew over here from Ireland because they backed him up in a uh, – you know what I'm talking about? Artem Lobov. Okay, yeah, Artem Lobov, Yeah. That, that, that's why it clicked for me. It was like the same concept to me. Like, okay, now Connor's going to fly over here to take care of, I don't know. Connor's not paying attention to this clown. He's training for a fight with Dustin Poirier, a yeah. real fighter. Right. Someone who could potentially fuck him up. Okay. Right. That's been my whole problem with this in, in, in the first place is the idea that we're, we're even – entertaining the thought that either of those two dudes, that being the Pauls are real fighters. We're putting them in the same conversation with guys who have fought their entire, for their entire lives, right? Earned their but, spots in the world, in the world of boxing and in the world of MMA. Okay? Yeah. But the issue is, is, is that you're saying that it gets under your skin that we're entertaining the thought, but Mayweather is taking it. And running with it. And we're talking about maybe the greatest boxer of all time. When has Mayweather ever turned down a big payday? I get that. That's easy work. That's light work. I'm going to make I get it. millions and millions of dollars to embarrass this guy. Anyone right. who's thinking that, oh, Logan Paul is much bigger. He could land a shot. No, he can't. No, he won't. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Anyone thinking that is delusional. Joe Rogan, I've sent you that clip of him talking about it. Logan's a big kid. He can box. He can fight. No, he can't. He can fight for an average person like you and I. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm somewhat athletic, okay? So if I spent six weeks from today in a boxing gym learning technique and you saw a video of me doing it, I'm pretty sure you go, yeah, you can move. It doesn't mean I'm a fighter. It doesn't mean I should be 
fighting professional boxers and professional fighters. It doesn't. Right. It doesn't. Right. Um, so do you, do you think if you had to make a prediction, how does, how does that fight go? Does Mayweather come out guns blazing and just try to finish this thing instantly? Or does he play the game out like he did with Connor and let him tire himself out and then come in and I'm pissed off that you're even asking me that. I want to know because you, because you have fallen for the trap. You're, you're stuck. You need, you need help getting out. Let me help you out. This is bullshit. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we shouldn't talk about it. We should. Okay, well, we have, have to. Knuckleheads this is pop culture, platform, this is, dude. This is pop culture and sports, sir. This is two factors that go into our show. We have to talk about this. I'm changing the way that the format of the show. <laughs> Look, man. No, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know what Floyd does. I don't care what Floyd does. All I know is that Floyd embarrasses the guy, whether he wants to do it in the first two minutes of the fight, whether he wants to do it in the eighth round. I don't know, but he embarrasses the guy. Logan Paul's. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This is fun. (laughs) The other thing too is um, I I think I sent it to you is that MMA MMA fighting a publication which I used to respect put out some article about how Conor McGregor opens up as a favorite in a boxing match with Jake Paul. Holy shit. Why are you no perpetuating way. the problem? <laughs> but also, why are you helping? Why, what are you doing? Leave it alone. Stop giving this guy the platform to be in the same conversation as real fighters, real professional athletes. That's why I'm saying Conor's not going to respond to this guy because while Conor McGregor talks a lot of shit and while he's made a lot of mistakes in the media and you've seen him sort of potentially tarnish, it, tarnish his own reputation, he's a professional fighter. He's not a clown. He's not a poser. He's a fighter. So is Dylan Dennis. So like we got to stop giving these guys the opportunity to be in the same, let alone uh, same universe as real fighters. It's just, it's, it's bad. And I can't believe this is what boxing has come to. It's just, it's, it bothers me. Yeah. I mean, but, but boxing itself hasn't come to that. I mean, it's not like you're seeing the Pauls in these organizations, these massive boxing organizations. I mean, these are exhibition type fights. Excuse me, sir. I mean, excuse me, sir. What? Logan Paul headlined a card were real champions. Well, I, I, what? Okay. I get that. I get that. Card. So I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. So a <laughs> card with two YouTube personalities headlined the same card that Billy Joe Saunders was fighting on. I understand that. But we all, but, Big Paul. but also, but, but also in understandingly, it was massive, but also, it was a card where we have two retired fighters fighting each other. That's a different card. But since you bring it up, let me get Oh, sorry. Okay, my bad. No, no, no. That's fine. I'm glad you did because that was going to be my next point. Jake Paul fought ahead on the card of a guy who was a multiple-time world champion, Badu Jack. Multiple-time world champion. Lifelong ass kicker. Lifelong fighter. <laughs> real professional fighter and this clown is ahead of him on the card makes no sense i'm sorry it makes no sense i get it well, i'm not disagreeing with you and then and then people also holy shit people are also talking about how jake paul brought up the fact like hey conor mcgregor you're zero and one in boxing and i'm two and oh fucker oh, who did you fight in those two fights you fought another youtube personality and you fought a retired basketball player who's never fought before what are we talking about this is crazy it's just it's if anything it's an idea of what 2020 is Uh, but it tells you how big youtube is right well of course yeah i'm not saying that the guys aren't good at marketing themselves and promoting their 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 business they're not in the business of fighting and like i said on the last I i think they're going to walk away from it. They're going to take, they're going to take their paychecks and they're going to walk away. 
they're not going to refine their skills as, as boxers or as fighters. They're not. In fact, I think it ends for Logan Paul when he gets embarrassed by Floyd Mayweather. I hope so. But that's why, that's why when I ask you if you had a prediction, what it would it be? I was kind of hoping you would say, I think he's going to come out and guns blazing and try, try his best to knock him out first round. Well, then it's not and a show. It, he's going to, he's that, the dude. He's I know. Do exact, all right. So, I, all right, I'll back up. I will make a prediction. He's going to let it, he's going to let it go a while. Okay. He's going to give right. the viewers, the people that actually waste their hard earned money on this horse shit. He's going to give them a show just like he did against Connor. Just like he did against the, Japanese kickboxer kid who, by the way, weighed 86 pounds. What was that about? <laughs> what the fuck was that about? Um, was that, was that like, a, like to appeal to that market, like the Japanese market? Like, was that, I don't remember who, who was that that he fought? Was he bit, was he a big name? He was a big name in Asia as a kickboxer. In Asia? Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's what I, that's what I mean. I wonder if like that was mainly to market to that. Yeah. I mean, well, look, that kid, Aside from being undersized and never having boxed before, that kid's an ass kicker. Like as a kickboxer, he's world class. Um, but he didn't get to kick Floyd. <laughs> Had he been able to kick right. Floyd, would have been in fucking trouble. Right. Um, but so, look again. I don't. I'm not. I'm not celebrating what the Pauls do with their business and how they promote and and the, it all works. Look, they're millionaires. I'm not. Right. I, I'm not going to tell them that their business is bad. I don't have to like it, but it's obviously working. Um, being a troll is a business now, believe it or not. We've seen that. We've talked about it before with the, the podcast we've seen and all that shit. So um, there's money to be made in being a troll. Right. It's fine. My biggest issue with this is that the members of the MMA media are actually entertaining this shit, which I don't think they should let TMZ do it. Okay. You know, Brendan Schaub had Logan Paul on his, one of his shows where they're supposed to be talking about fighting. The first 15 minutes of the show was Brendan Schaub talking about his physique and how jacked he looked and how shred. And like, it was like the two of them jacking off each other on camera verbally. It was like, hmm. What is this? Like, what? This guy used to fight, you know, at a high level, you know? What is this? Why is this? But again, he's, he's a clout chaser now. He's not a fighter. The fact that he has fighting, and I've said this to you, and again, I mean, no disrespect, kind of, Brendan, but the fact that he has shows where he's allowed to talk about fighting is, he, dude, he's, which way is the bandwagon going? Because he's running behind it, trying to jump on, okay? Right. Well, but as you said, he's a clout chaser. So he's going to, even when he's doing like MMA shows or anything like that or talking about fighting, he's going to be biased in the way that he thinks it's going to benefit him. Yeah, but it, but yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, so the, the, I just have a problem with the MMA media entertaining this, this, this stuff. You know, people that, people that I respect who come out against it and be like, hey, we need to slow the fuck down. Good for you. Uh, I'm talking to you, Brett Okamoto. Good for you. Thank you for going, hey, we should not be excited about a YouTuber driving by a TV set throwing water balloons at a real fighter. What are we doing? Right. Why are we pumped up about this? You know, that's like a prank. Also, that's like a prank that like a 16-year-old pulls. That was a group of guys in their mid-20s driving up in a pickup truck throwing water balloons and wet toilet paper at people. Have we all even took, taken a step back and thought about that? Who does that at that age? Did you throw water balloons at people when, when you were 25? Not that I know of. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I did either. <laughs> I don't think I did either. I think I was getting loaded, having fun with my friends, trying to get laid. <laughs> what are these guys doing? I'm sure they all get laid. That's fine, but whatever. Um, they have, yeah, let's, sure let's double good. check their bank accounts compared to ours and see. I'm sure they're doing fine, but still, um, I don't know. So I, it's only going to get worse. I, I'm complaining about it and I'm, it's almost like I'm wasting my breath, but Hey, this is, this is, 
this is our show. I'm going to say what the fuck I want. And what I want is for the MMA and boxing media to stop giving these guys a platform. But then you got fighters, you know, Masvidal was working out with Logan Paul. I think he was working out with both of them. Uh, I don't know. I, I, did I send you the video of Stephen Thompson talking about it? Huh? Yeah, he was. He, look, oh, can we just say that he's the nicest guy in sports? Forget about just fighting in sports. Is he the nicest guy in the world? It's, well, he did get the NMF belt, did he not? The nicest motherfucker belt? Yeah. Yeah. He, dude. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Like I tweeted last night while he was fighting. I was like, he's so like, he's such a good sport that it pisses off his opponents. Well, did you, I mean, you watched the full fight last night, correct? Oh yeah. With Jeff Neal. Yeah. It was, it was like constant. Uh, hey, good like, job, dude. Yeah. Hey, good job. But like they're through the whole fight. They'd be in the middle of fighting each other. And he just yeah. like, you know, give him the tap. And then uh, Jeff Neal's mouth guard came out at one point. Steve and Thompson's Stephen Tom, good. yeah, he just stopped. And uh, even the commentators are like, man, he is the nicest guy ever. Unreal. <laughs> like in the middle of a UFC fight. It's just Unreal. so funny. Um, but he's a bad motherfucker. Dude, he, he, had, a, he pl- had the perfect fight last night. That's what he does. Just- the only thing that I could see that Jeff Neal, like Jeff, I think they kept, they kept saying like the octagon was a 25-foot octagon instead of 30, right? Yeah. Which was going to throw Wonderboy off a little bit. So Jeff Neal was trying to pressure quite a bit to, you know, make him change his stance or not be right. in that, right. that karate stance that he's used to, which did work a little bit. But, I mean, he just, he, he just picked him apart the entire fight. Yeah, dude, he's good. He is a real fighter. For sure. Uh, undefeated kickboxer. Now, MMA ass kicker. He talked about the pause and was like, yeah, they don't belong in the sport. This is ridiculous. He said it in the nicest way possible. I really wanted him <laughs> at the end to be like, fuck those dudes. But he didn't do that. Um, well, even the uh, DC, when he had the post-fight interview with him, he you know, asked him what he thought next year was going to entail and stuff like that. And he started naming all some names, basically saying that he was going for that title again for next year. But he was like, you know, I've had, I had a little bit of a back and forth on Twitter with a guy, but it don't seem like that's really going to pan out. And she's like, man, just, I just want to see you mad. I just want to see you once just go off. Yeah, he doesn't, it doesn't, it, you're never going to see that. Right. It's not going to happen. Right. Yeah. So, but wait, what do you, but I do want to get your opinion real quick before we move on. What, what do you think there? Like, who do you think he gets next? I mean, he's number, he's ranked number five right now five and he's probably going to maybe he'll move up. Um, like he said, Masvidal again, that would be a rematch. We've got Covington in the picture there. If I had to pick one of the top contenders, I would like to see him fight Colby Covington because I think the, the back and forth between the two would just be hilarious. Like the only thing that I, the, the only thing that was throwing me off about that, I was thinking about that last night was that if they're talking, they're talking about doing Masvidal and Covington. Yeah. So if that pans out, Wonderboy just fought, and you're probably talking, what, maybe February to March at the earliest that they would be able to put Masvidal and Covington together? Oh, yeah. Because you, you already have the UFC for January. That's Connor and Poirier. Right. So that, that's two to three months away that Wonderboy would have to be just sitting, waiting for a fight to pop up, and then however long it would take after that for Masvidal and Covington to be able to fight again. So you've got to think that Wonder Boy's got to have a fight in there somewhere. I just don't know who it would be. Yeah, but I mean that was his first fight in a year last night, wasn't it? Yeah, it's true. If he's going to stay on that path, but if he's well, looking for a t- if he's looking for a title shot, one fight a year, he's going to age pretty fast. Well, he's about to turn thirty eight. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd like to see him fight Colby Covington. It would almost be like his niceness would nullify Colby Covington's fake trash talk. You know, uh, it, w- it would almost if he hasn't won over everyone yet. I think he would win over everyone in the back and forth leading up to that fight. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the top of that division. Who else there would be? Who, the people you know, ahead like of him Usman. Are, well, Usman's going to fight Burns. They're going to try to right. repeat that again, and then you would think the winner of Jorge or Masvidal and 
Colby Covington gets the winner of that fight. So, um, you know, Steven Thompson doesn't want to go backwards in the rankings. Like after this, right. he's done it twice now. So he might just have to wait and perhaps fight the loser of Masvidal and Covington. I don't know. Right. Either way, he's a bad motherfucker. He is for sure. Did you, you, so you didn't respond. Did you see that Michael Bisping said that the Pauls reached out to his management team and offered them a fight? Uh, oh, I did respond. I just said, why would Michael Bisping want to fight? Or why, why, why would he want to box? I mean, I know it's a money grab, but. That paper. I, I don't know. Is, that, is, is Bisping a big enough name? Um, in the fighting world, fuck yeah. But this is a boxing match, correct? Not yeah. MMA? I, I potentially, yeah. It is potentially MMA? No, I think it's boxing. Oh, okay, okay. Because Bisping said on his podcast, like, yeah, uh, you're, you're 2-0, and I'm 0-0. I've never boxed, so let's do it. Like, I think he would do it. I think he's a crazy motherfucker. I think he would do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and let me I, just, would watch, I would watch it. I would 100% watch it because let me just – he would wipe the floor – with either either of those dudes' asses and mouths, okay? Yeah. He would fuck both of them up. Wouldn't be a fight. Would not. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't. I just don't know. It's unbelievable. So we'll see. We'll see how this – I will not I will not be watching Floyd and Logan Paul. Not going to do it. Um. That is one thing I definitely will not spend money on. I don't care how cheap it gets or how cheap it is now. Um, my only hopes is that when they put real fighters on the card, on the undercard, is that people fucking watch because I'm sure they will. I just now, dude, that Logan Paul KSI, the second fight, had Billy Joe fucking Saunders on it and Devin fucking Haney, two world-class bad motherfucking champions. And they were on the undercard for this fucking doink. Okay. I you should you should be a prom- you need to be a promoter. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I got the chops. You would be like a Dana White. You would just after after every fight, you would just bad mouth <laughs> the fighters. <laughs> no, I would not. No, I wouldn't do that. No, no, no. <laughs> I would bad to I would bad mouth YouTube stars all day. Not <laughs> Dana White summed it up best when he got asked about Jake Paul. Did you see what he said? Mm -mm. He said something along the line. I'm paraphrasing wildly here, but he said something along the lines of not quite sure why we're talking about this guy. He fought an ex NBA player. He goes, you ever watched NBA fights? And the reporter was like, yeah, he goes, yeah, yeah. Not a lot of technique there, huh? (laughs) Right. That's it. That's all. That's all that needs to be said. Right. Right. Nate didn't train. He hadn't trained up to that moment. Now, it's Nate's fault because he called out Jake Paul, right? It's his fault. He thought, I'm athletic enough, I can hit. But Jake Paul has been training. So that's the difference of a person who has been training to fight and a person who has not. It doesn't usually end well but you you know, in a boxing video. match. On the street, right. that's a different story. But in a boxing you, match. You sent me a video of Joe Rogan talking to Andrew Schultz. Yeah. About about the Pauls, and you said it really annoyed you because Rogan was basically saying that he would probably lose in a fight to which one? Which one was he talking about? I don't know. Joe Rogan's fifty-three-year-old bum knee, bum back ass would beat the fuck out of both of those dudes. I get it. So he, you, he's being nice. Do think, so, honestly, do you think he's just being humble, or do you really think that he believes that he would lose in a fight to one of those guys? I think he's well past the point where he's going to ever say that he's going to kick the shit out of someone. Can't do that on Spotify. He'll have to say sorry for that. (laughs) Um, I think he was being, I think he was playing the game. That's what I think. What I don't think and what I know is that he would beat the shit out of both of those kids. (laughs) Even at 53, he would. I'm sorry. I'm sorry he would. I've, I've, I've still seen the kicks that he does to a bag with a bum knee. Yeah. And they are scary as shit. 
Now, if he boxed him, I don't know. I've, I've never seen Joe Rogan spar with anyone in boxing. That's because I don't think he does ever. He has. Well, back in the day, I don't think yeah. – I sorry, I shouldn't have said ever. But, like, in, in the past 10, 15 years, he probably hasn't. Because all he talks about is how sparring is terrible. He'd still beat the shit out of him. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I think I'm spent. Okay. Since all you do is – since you say all I do is rant. It's good for the show. Okay, good. Yeah. Serving – Serving a purpose somewhere in this life. That's great. <laughs> I I, for the, for the, uh, rapidly. Yeah. For the ones of listeners that we have where they I'm sure they enjoy your ranting. We had 20. <laughs> 20. Wow. Where did you get those analytics? I have my sources. Oh, okay, cool. Well, thank you to you 20 listeners. We appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, I do need, I need to know what the name of this episode is going to be. We need to name all our episodes. Last episode was all of the above. Boy band rabbit hole. Well, that's a good, oh, wow. I don't know if I like that or not, I actually. Like I like it. Now that I said it out loud, too, I love it. Let's do that. All right, well, with it. there you have it. Boy band rabbit hole. <laughs>